Um, thank you for being here today, uh, folks. We are recording this. I know some people have to uh, leave a little bit early, but I'm honored that you'd be here. Uh, today, we're going to do a session. Um, this is the fourth in a series that we've been doing. If you've missed any of the others, I'll give you a chance to get those here in just a second. Um, but this is the fourth in a series that we're doing just for existing members and, and MindFire clients. And I see a few people still coming in the room, so I'll officially kick off here in just a minute. But today's all about a very important part of the opti-channel social selling strategy. Um, one of the optimal channels that we're encouraging all of you to look into is LinkedIn, as you know. And so we're going to be talking about um, how to craft a profile that uh, generates leads and sales. And so much has changed with LinkedIn. If you haven't looked at it in a while, or even if you are on LinkedIn and it's not doing anything for you, there's a very specific reason, a couple of reasons why that's likely the case. So I'm going to do a little bit of um, instruction and overview around the whole process. And then we're going to go live into LinkedIn. I've got a couple of uh, brave volunteers. Jessica is going to get me those uh, URLs. And I'm going to ask all of you to also uh, submit your profile URL when we get there so I can take a look at yours and give you real-time feedback. We're going to go through like 15 things that you got to consider. So we are recording this. Um, we're going to go boom, boom, boom through each one of them. Um, and then I'll also give you an opportunity. If you want to go deeper into some of those, I'll give you some next steps towards the end around how you can do that. I'm also going to show you some of the mistakes um, that folks are making. One of them, uh, and some of you who have been through our training before, you know this one, but some of you, uh, usually around 90%, are making a uh, pretty significant mistake. Uh, and that is that you're sending viewers of your profile to competitors. So unless you have a compelling reason to do that, I'm going to show you how to fix that. And we're also going to give you, if you don't have this yet, I'm going to go grab it over here off my desk. Uh, we've got a, uh, a checklist to ensure that uh, in, in addition to this training, um, that you have something you can refer to and start to check these things off the list. So if you just jumped in, you haven't missed anything yet, I'm just doing a little bit of housekeeping um, so that we can uh, get everybody in the room comfortably settled in. Like I said, this is a series that we're doing. This is the fourth in a series around how to market, sell, and lead through this time of crisis. And uh, we're focused on opti-channel marketing and sales. And we want to bring you insights from people who are actually doing it. So if you missed any of those sessions, um, this, these, the series is specifically for you if you're an agency, if you're a printer. We've got 2D printers. We've got 3D printers here. Um, any type of B2B, B2C organization, um, anybody in leadership, sales, or marketing who realizes that what used to work from a marketing and sales perspective, just isn't working anymore. And we're in such a crucial time uh, in history here that we want to do everything we can, especially to our customers and to our clients and members to bring you what you need to know to be competitive. So like I said, this is the fourth in the series. If you've missed any of these, drop the word recordings into the chat and Jessica um, will follow up with you uh, to get you these URLs. We've done one. Uh, we brought Brian Galad onto the show here. He's a uh, LinkedIn expert, and he shared how he's grown his followers from a few hundred to over 200,000 and how he generates revenue um, off of LinkedIn. Uh, two weeks ago, uh, Mike Robinson from Summit Direct Mail, fantastic interview with Mike, if I can't say so myself, mostly because of what Mike shared, not me, but what Mike shared about how they've been able to weave OptiChannel into the print offering that they um, that they have and that they offer their clients. So if you missed any of these, drop the word recordings into the chat. Last week, I taught the social selling playbook um, and showed you how the top 1% are actually using social selling to be able to drive leads and sales, or both for their own organization, as well as there are agencies and other service providers who are now starting to sell this as a service to their clients. And so today's the fourth in a series. If you missed any of those, let us know in the chat there. We'll get you those recordings. Okay, I see Michael, Jeff, George, Troy, Jackie, Larry asking for those, James asking for those, fantastic. Keep, keep those uh, requests coming in. We'll make sure to get those to you um, in follow-up. So like I said, what we wanna do today is I'm gonna start with um, kind of the mindset behind how you need to rethink your LinkedIn profile. There is a fairly significant shift in thinking that most people need to do in order to really understand how to take the next step in that journey. So we're going to start there. Then I'm going to give you the framework of how to actually do this, how to think about it from a strategic and framework perspective. And then 
I'm going to show you a few quick examples of what happens when you do this right. I think it's really important that I don't just sit here preaching to you, but that you see from others just like you what happens when you do this right. Because I remember um, 18 months ago, 24 months ago, when I was in a similar, similar situation to many of you, where it's like, okay, social selling, using social sounds cool, sounds interesting, but how does it really get me results? How does it drive business? So I want to make sure you understand that. And then we're going to get to uh, kind of a interactive live portion of the discussion today where I need a few volunteers. I already have a few lined up where I'm going to go through your profile and point out things that are going to benefit you and the rest who are here, both over in LinkedIn Live as well as in Zoom, so that you can understand how to go back and apply this yourself. And we have resources for you. We have this checklist that we're going to provide you and a ton of other information um, in order to equip you on this journey. So if you need any um, next steps, if you need help, probably about 60 to 70 minutes in to the discussion today, I'm going to outline a few things that we can do to help you, a um, few next steps that we can uh, help you put in place. Speaking of that, I have a couple of resources here I want to make sure you're aware of. Jess, if you can get these uh, links ready for me. First of all, I want to make sure we're connected on LinkedIn. So if we're not connected on LinkedIn for whatever reason, Jessica is going to put my profile URL there into the chat in Zoom and in LinkedIn. And I want to make sure we're connected because if you want to learn how to do this, I always am sharing both through MindFire or as well as through my own personal brand. We're always producing content that's focused on helping you market and sell in this very difficult time. So we need to be connected on LinkedIn for you to have a better chance of seeing that information. Second, we have a private members-only LinkedIn group. Some of you are actually in that group right now watching me stream live. But if you're not, I want to make sure you join that. So Jessica is going to give you that link as well. This is where we share inside information only for clients, only for members. It's a safe place to share and to ask uh, for help. And it's a place that we're going to be investing even more time in bringing you value to ensure that you can be successful during these tough times. There's also this uh, COVID-19 print group, which many of you are already a member of. There's probably 7,000 or 8,000 members there. I won't go into the whole story. Many of you already know it, but we created this in response to the crisis. And this is where we have been able to foster a community of um, print organizations and suppliers to print, vendors uh, in the print space, who are all focused on sharing ideas, tips, strategies, leads, um, people that need help, people that need print. Many of you can fulfill on that. Um, and so if you're not a member of that group, I would highly encourage it. Jessica is going to drop that in the chat as well. And then one more resource. That's my cell phone number. You can text me anytime uh, during this session or um, anytime in general, because what we've been doing, let me bring this up on the screen here is, and erase my beautiful drawings, we find and we get on a daily basis leads for folks like you. Here's one that just came in this morning. I threw this in last minute, 748 this morning Pacific time. And this is what I want to train you how to, how to do. If this isn't happening to you, I want to show you how to do this. Now, we're not printers. You know that. We're a software technology company. But every day, we're finding or getting leads like this to say, hey, can you fulfill this print? Or do you know someone who can? Look, uh, if, if this is something you can do, read it quickly here on the screen. Here's Alex's um, email right here. You can follow up and say, hey, Dave told me to uh, follow up with you. All right. This is something that happens all the time for us. Here's Alex asking us to handle a batch of print. Um, I want to show you how to do this yourself. And because it's hard sometimes to get notified on LinkedIn, I try to create a post like this in one of the groups and then notify you folks when these things are available. But you don't always check LinkedIn or LinkedIn doesn't do a good job notifying you. So what we've been doing is sending those out through SMS. So if you text me, text me right now and say, hey, I'm on the training. I would love to be able to get print leads as they come up. I would like to get marketing opportunities as they would come up. I would like to get uh, insight into things um, that I need to know in order to grow my sales. Text me right now. We'll add you to a list and we'll send you things like this as we find them. I also want to train you how to do that for yourself. That's the point of today. But until you get there, we're going to continue to push these out to the community. So I'll give you a second. Um, Jess, if you want, just copy uh, Alex's email there off the screen. Put it in the chat. If anybody can fulfill this, this is something that Alex is looking for right now. All right? That's what we want to help you do. Now, something that's going to be super helpful in about uh, 10 minutes 
um, is to have LinkedIn and Zoom up on two different screens, okay? If you're watching me on LinkedIn already, maybe you want two monitors. If you're watching us on Zoom, maybe you want one monitor for Zoom and one monitor for LinkedIn because you're gonna wanna be able to follow along and look at your own profile as we're going through this, okay? I'll remind you again here in a minute, but in case you need a little bit of time to set that up, let me know, all right? Cool, so let me start with the mindset without any further ado, okay? There is a shift in how you wanna think about your LinkedIn activity, your social selling activity, and specifically in your profile. There is a method, there is a system, and once you learn it and you apply it over time, you'll start to see the results if you're consistent in doing it, okay? So I'm going to start here, kind of in the bigger picture around the mindset. And it's a, it's a shift in thinking that applies to social selling, but also um, to other channels, um, email, as an example, or, or the web, direct mail, other channels that you use uh, to engage your client. And, and, and the, the, the shift in thinking is this. It requires you to look at what you're doing in your outbound communication in a different way. I should say, well, it's different for some of you. Some of you are already doing this. Some of you, this is going to be completely foreign. Here's what I mean. The opti-channel philosophy, and we're not going to go too deeply into it today. I'm just giving you a piece of it, requires as a crucial underpinning of its success. Bella, are you here, Isabella? Yeah, I see Isabella. This is going to be key for the work that, that we're doing. Crucial to success is that you have to give away value. You have to think about giving away information, content, that's like handing out $100 bills. Literally, you have to think, I'm giving away money. And I know it sounds different. I know it sounds odd to some, but you really have to approach everything that you're doing from the perspective of delivering value to your target audience. The mindset of marketing communication of giving, 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 and giving is new for a lot of people. Um, but it, as it relates to social, especially what we're talking about today, it's key because on social, most people, as you know, talk about themselves or just sit there and consume what they're seeing, right? You have to change the way you think about what you're doing on social in order to understand, I'm gonna bring this home to your LinkedIn profile, right? But I want you to understand the mindset. Most people are like the folks that you see here. They're just consuming social. Maybe this guy is on Instagram, maybe he's on Facebook, she might be on LinkedIn, maybe uh, she's on TikTok. You get the idea, right? And they're just consuming. The shift that you have to make, what I wanna encourage all of you who are sitting here thinking is, Move your mindset from it's all about me to giving value as a producer of content instead of just consuming the information. So I'm going to describe to you what I mean, but you have to switch your mindset from thinking about I'm just going to be consuming. I'm just going to be mindlessly scrolling through Facebook. Hey, there's no problem with that. We all do that, right? But start to look at the world through producer's eyes. And I'm going to tell you what I mean by that. Okay. The key is. Less than 1% of people on LinkedIn are actually producing content. I'm going to tell you why that's so hugely important to all of you here in just a minute. 99%, over 99% of people on LinkedIn are just consuming what the very small percentage of us are putting out there, okay? More on that in a second and why that is so important. But when you do this, when you shift your mindset to giving value and producing content for all intents and purposes, this is a significant strategic advantage if you harness it, okay? Now, will it happen in one day? No. Is it going to happen in 30 days? No. Is it going to happen in 60? No. It might. There are some people who get very lucky and who do it right and happen to hit the right person at the right time, but the key is you have to do this consistently over time. This is a strategic advantage that's going to help you sell more of whatever it is you want to get out into the world. Now, some of you are probably thinking, look, I've tried LinkedIn in the past and it doesn't do anything, or I'm not on LinkedIn right now, neither are my customers, so why would I think that this would help me sell? Or, um, you know, I thought LinkedIn was just for people looking for jobs. Um, it's a place for me to put my resume. How in the heck does this help me sell anything? 
if, you, if you're thinking any of those things, and maybe you've dabbled in LinkedIn a little bit before, and you say, well, LinkedIn doesn't work for me in my business. I often use an example, and some of you have heard me say this before, that um, an analogous situation, since we have a lot of printers and direct mailers here, is you know, if you had a customer that you were doing direct mail for, and, and you send it out, and um, you know, you, maybe let's say it's targeted at 100,000 people, and there's a phone number on that direct mail piece saying, hey, uh, give me a call, right? You know, the, the recipient is supposed to call in order to respond to that. And nobody calls. Let's say nobody, nobody picks up the phone to call your customer based on that direct mail piece. Well, clearly what's wrong with that is that the phone is broken, right? The phone system doesn't work. The phone networks are broken. Clearly that's the problem. No, not the phone system. It's not the phone network. It's not the phone you can't blame that mechanism for it not working. Something further upstream, as you all know, the list, the creative, the offer, the call to action, something else is wrong, right? So my point in saying that is, folks, if you think LinkedIn doesn't work because you've tried it or you're not using it um, or you think your customers are, are not on there, don't blame LinkedIn. I'm, I'm here to tell you as your friend, it's in your head. You need to break through that be open-minded to considering the possibilities here. And I'm going to show you a lot of what you need to know today, um, but I can't possibly do everything. That's why I'm going to give you more resources at the end so you can continue in this journey if this is something that makes sense for you. So what's got to change is up here. That's the first place, all right? Now, here's the process. I showed you a little bit of this last week if you were in class with us in the, in the session last week, the episode that we did last week, okay? There's four key pieces to this framework. I want to transition now to specifically to the framework, okay? So if you're taking notes, new section in your notes. The first part is establishing your brand by focusing on your LinkedIn profile. This is so important. That's why I'm doing a private session just for you on this today, okay? That's the first uh, foundational element here in the framework. Second is you need to publish content. I've told you a little bit about why this is so important. Third, you need to connect with decision makers in your target market. And fourthly, you need to engage. Each of these, we can spend uh, numerous hours and sessions going through, okay? I'm just going to touch on these a little bit today. I'm putting most of my focus right here. Why is it important to build your brand by having your LinkedIn profile set up correctly? That might be a question that, that some of you have. 50% um, of buyers are avoiding you. Bill, Chris, James, Jackie, Irwin, Eric, Jeff, because you have an incomplete LinkedIn profile. Now, I don't know if you actually do, but 50% of buyers will ignore you if you have an incomplete profile. So some of you could be le you know, losing or um, missing 50% of your potential market because you're not completing your profile in the proper way, okay? So I'm gonna show you what you need to do here there are other things that you also need to consider, right? When you do all four of these things together, um, it kind of starts to accrue. All of the activities start to accrue and generate the results um, that I'm actually going to give you a little insight into here in just a minute. So why does this framework, why do these four pieces work? And, and why specifically on LinkedIn? Some of you might be thinking, why is LinkedIn such a great place right now, Dave? Why are you telling us that we need to invest more in LinkedIn? Is LinkedIn just being super nice right now and helping all of us out? Well, a little bit more than that. Let me, let me tell you what I mean. What's going on there on LinkedIn? It has to do with the concept of a content-saturated platform versus a content-deficient platform, okay? So if you're writing it down, just take a note. I'm going to start with content-saturated platform. There are platforms out there, social networks is what I mean, that have more content on them than viewers. It's basic supply and demand, basic principles. So the platform in this situation, when there's so much content, they only serve that content to a small portion of your audience because there's just so much stuff. So this means it's not necessarily easy to get in front of your prospects and your customers um, because the platform is content saturated. So if, you, if you're wondering, like, what's an example of a platform, Facebook, um, Instagram, uh, those are bad for what we call organic reach. Drop a one in Zoom or in LinkedIn if you're understanding the idea of a content-saturated platform. Does that make sense? Give me a one. I see one's coming into Zoom. I see 
Uh, let me see the ones over there in LinkedIn. Okay, that's content saturated. On the other side are content deficient platforms. These are platforms where there's more eyeballs, more viewers than content. They're hungry for content. Now, you have to find these platforms. That's what OptiChannel is all about, finding the optimal channel where there is a lot of attention, viewers, but not enough content. Example of that right now is TikTok. Another example is LinkedIn. It's great for organic reach. So this is where LinkedIn is right now. It's content deficient, okay? So without going into a lot of, you know, the details, the nitty gritty of the algorithm, you don't need to know all of that for right now. Um, I, there's a lot that you can learn there as well. But the key premise here is, if you're understanding this, give me a yes in the chat, that on LinkedIn, you have the ability to not only reach your connected audience, but also, let's say, if I'm connected with um, Jeff, who's here, a couple of Jeffs, actually. If I'm connected with Jeff and he likes my post on LinkedIn, it'll get shared potentially to all of his connections, too. So let's say he's got 5,000 connections, right? I've got uh, 20 some odd thousand. He's got 5,000. Multiply that by 30, 40, 50 other people who are liking or engaging with my content, and you can see how quickly the visibility for what you're doing on LinkedIn can expand. As I said before, the good news here is that less than 1% of people are creating content. The LinkedIn machine is starving for content. Does that make sense, everybody? Give me a yes. Give me a yes in the chat if you're understanding why this is so crucial. Yes over in Zoom. Yes over in LinkedIn. I want to make sure you understand this. What happens now when you do these things correctly? I told you I was going to show you some examples, right? So first of all, publishing content on LinkedIn. And when I say publishing content, by the way, that can also mean writing comments, okay? I know some of you are scared to create a post on LinkedIn. What am I going to say? I'm not interesting enough. I'm not creative. I can't write, right? Our, our heads give us all these reasons. Well, you don't have to write necessarily your own post. I want you to get there eventually. But if you're not doing that yet, thoughtful, insightful, inquisitive, well-written comments are also publishing content, okay? Here's an example from Rachel. I don't know if Rachel's here, actually. Let me see if there's any Rachels here. No, I don't think so. Rachel was actually in the session we did last week. If you missed that again, ask for the recording. I told everyone in that session that same thing I'm telling you here, commenting will get you results, okay? And this was a few days after class. She says, I've been calling on a design firm, but not done any work with them yet, who recently did a post they posted showca showcasing some great political posters that they designed. I commented on it and just got an RFQ. Okay? So I'm not blowing smoke here, guys and girls, men and women. Sorry. <laughs> this happens all the time. By the way, I say that because sometimes I slip into saying guys and girls and I know I heard from some people that that was a little bit offensive to some. So I apologize. It slips out. I have so many kids here at home um, that I'm always saying, guys, girls, get off the walls. Stop throwing bricks. You know what I mean? So forgive me if that offends anybody. Here's another example. Again, where publishing content, well-written comments can get your results. Look at what, look at what uh, Chavi, I think that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> Marianne says you can call me a girl anytime. All right, girl. Good for you. So Chavi says, look, I'm so excited. I have a call tomorrow with the kind of potential client I've dreamed about for years, but was sure I'd never get a chance at. And so here I am. I eat our own dog food. I take our own medicine and I leave comments, right? So I go and I ask her, how did you land that call? How did you get this opportunity to speak to this potential client? Look what she says. Surprisingly enough, an executive from the company, an executive reached out after I commented on his LinkedIn post. Are you getting this? Give me a yes in the chat. Give me a yes in the chat if you're understanding this. When you follow this process, when you learn these skills, when you get your profile right, here's somebody I talked about last week as well, Joanne Gore, sent out four, four proposals last week and booked three great meetings this week. 100% of her revenue now is coming from LinkedIn. 100%, okay? Here's an example from us here. When you provide content, high value content, even when you think no one's listening, Men and women, I know that sometimes you'll put something out there and you think nobody saw it. 
Well, if really nobody saw it, then what are you scared of? Get out there and start doing it. But you need to continue to do this even when you think no one's listening to you. Because the power of what's going on here, as you're giving out value, as you're handing out these $100 bills, for many of you, and I know this because I see this happen to our clients and I see it happen to us all the time, you've won three, four, five, six-figure deals that you don't even know about yet. What do I mean by that? When you put content out there, somebody's going to see it. They may not like it. They might not even comment. But by virtue of the fact that you're consistently putting content out there and by virtue of the fact that your profile is set up in the right way, you're creating a brand impression with that individual, with that company. And they may already decide, you know what, when I'm ready for um, Phil's service, when I'm ready for what Juliana offers, when I'm ready for uh, what Doug and Harshil have to offer me in web to print, I know where I'm going. You may not know that you're a customer yet, but they're just one message away. Here's one that, that I received. It's funny how life works, says this person. I talked to you three years ago. You always kept in touch. <laughs> I basically hate everyone, but you're a real good dude, right? You've built trust with me. This is through the outbound communication that we do. As I saw you grow and develop, your random acts of kindness, these are the $100 bills, is why we went with you without even discussing price. You are your brand. Men and women, that's true for you. People don't understand that. Amen. We didn't even question price because you had my trust and therefore I should have blanked that out. Therefore, Joe's trust as well. You getting this? Six-figure deals just like that. Everyone, drop a yes in the chat if you're understanding what I'm saying here. I want to encourage you and I want to show you real examples of what happens. Now, Tracy, I know you sell homes, right? Your deals are six-figure deals as well. This stuff happens. If you think it's just for little deals, don't think that. If you think it's just for big deals, don't think that. It's for all of you, I argue, for all of you. All right, so let's get tactical now, all right? We're 25 minutes in here. I want to get tactical. Um, but before I do that, I want to just ask you all a question. I like to keep these interactive. That's why I like to keep this uh, discussion going both in LinkedIn and Zoom. I want to ask you all a question. Take a moment while I drink some water here. Take a moment. What was the aha moment that you just had? I know some of you just had a light bulb go off. Something just went off for one of you, two of you. In a room this size, usually about 10% of you are going to have a moment where you're like, holy crap, that connection, that brain connection that you just helped me make, Dave, is going to change things for me. What was that for you? Bill says how content can be shared. Okay, I see Bill and Zoom. Jeff is saying the supply and demand. So Jeff, you're talking about the content deficient platforms? Yeah, that's an unlock for a lot of people. Uh, Troy is saying people might be seeing my posts even if there are no likes. Yes, yes, Troy. Uh, Larry is saying writing comments is content and represents your brand. Yes, 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 yes. Larry, that's something that in the next iteration of the six-week class that you went through, we're actually going to focus on more. I'm remiss that we didn't uh, highlight that more in the class that you went through. So yes, big, big opportunity. Marianne says need to be patient and work the process. Yes. Warren says just a small message can get traction. Don't be afraid. Taylor says, I didn't realize that LinkedIn is basically free attention. Yes. If we have their attention, that's the first step. Absolutely, Taylor. Absolutely. Michael saying the difference in social platforms. Bill says, sharing my, sharing my comment or post to their network. Yes. Yes. Okay. Let me see. LinkedIn, folks who are in the private group, if you have any uh, light bulbs that just went off, any connections, anything that clicked, I want to hear those. And it's helpful for you to write those out because that helps you actually cement that new learning in your mind. So let's get tactical now. Like I said, if you have two screens, this is the time to get those fired up and ready. Um, the first part of the framework that we're going to be looking at here, the focus for today is, is your profile, as you know. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to give you a little bit of instruction. If you're not used to using LinkedIn, or even if you are using LinkedIn, there are many things that you're probably not considering that I want to open your eyes to. Okay, and then we're going to go into the uh, real life examples from some of you brave volunteers, and we're going to take a look at the things that you can do to enhance your profile. So Jess is going to send this out afterwards. Uh, later today, I think an email will go out with all the resources. Um, there's a guide if you don't have this. Um, everything that I'm covering today is enumerated in a checklist um, in that document. So if you don't yet have that, um, but there's a lot of new stuff. Even if you do have this checklist already, there's a lot of new stuff that I'm covering today. Um, that you're going to want to pay attention to. So we're going to send you the slides, stuff that's not in the guide. 
Um, we're going to send you the slides afterwards so that you can apply those things as well. All right. So for now, just watch the screen, take a few notes. I'm going to cover the highlights here, and then I'm going to drop right into um, your examples. All right. So the first thing is, let me, let me share with you a little bit about why having a LinkedIn profile matters. And this is something that even for me, and I think I, I wrote this in some of the emails to a few of you, even for me going back ah, 18, 24 months ago, uh, I didn't realize that LinkedIn is much more than just a resume. It started as that professional CV online, right? But it's so much more than that. It's selling your brand as, a, as an individual and as a company. It represents your brand. And people are judging you and your company, judging me and our company, based on our profile, based on our LinkedIn profile. Like I said, 49% of buyers research a sales rep on LinkedIn. 50% say that they're going to avoid you if you have an incomplete profile. What do I mean by incomplete profile? Some of you look like this right now, over here, this, this version of Veronica. You see this over here on the screen? You go to a profile like this, to anybody who has used LinkedIn even a little bit, you see a profile like this and immediately you know this person hasn't invested any time in their LinkedIn brand. They don't care about LinkedIn. They're not active on LinkedIn. They're sketchy. It's a bot. Who knows what it is, right? Versus this version of Veronica. Professional picture, this cover image, which we're going to talk about. The headline here, she's got activity. You can see this is a real live person, especially in today's age where we have all of these warnings about bots and um, you know, accounts that are out there fishing and do all, the, uh, all of these nefarious things. You got to take into consideration how you appear to people. Don't be this. This is closer to where you want to be, right? This one looks real. So the key is that profile that I'm going to help you create here can make a very strong impression on your potential market and your clients. 92% of buyers will engage with you as a seller if you're seen as a thought leader. And your profile on LinkedIn is kind of like a landing page, a mini website where you can establish that kind of credibility. So if you're a data-based logic person, I'm trying to give you some insights here from a numeric perspective, a database perspective as to why it is so important, okay? The big mind shift that you need to go into your profile when you rewrite it, when you recraft it with, is the following. Most of you, most of us, myself included, take the approach with their LinkedIn profile, I did this in the past, of writing it from the me, 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 me perspective, right? I'm so awesome. Well, that might work if you're, I don't know, if you're applying for a job or looking for a job, maybe, right? But it's not an online resume. It's here's how I can help businesses. Here's how I can help people just like you. Here's how I can help the situation that you're in. Here's what I can deliver for you. And yeah, of course, I'm awesome. But it's for you. You see the difference between these two? Give me a yes in the chat. I see it, Eileen saying yes 100% over there on LinkedIn. Give me a yes in Zoom. I want to see the yeses coming in. Do you understand the difference? Most of you, that's not your fault. You haven't been shown what to do yet. But most of you, if you look at your profile, are all over here, okay? There's no life to them. There's no personality to them. Um, most of you are saying, hey, it's all about me. I'm so awesome. That's not what your target market cares about. You know this. I'm sure for some of you, the light bulb just went off and you thought, shoot, how come I didn't think of that, right? You want to talk about how you can deliver value to your ICP, your ideal customer profile. Is that making sense? Let's see. Marianne says, ugh, I have to go. We'll watch the recording. Thanks for sending $100 bills to us. Amen, Marianne. That's how I see it. No problem. You can watch the recording. Michael says, been afraid of the platform because of this. Which part, Michael? Because people say, me, 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 I'm so awesome, or because of uh, the second here? Tell me more, Michael. I want to know. I want to make sure I understand. Lauren, I know I've talked to you and to your, your father about this, and, I'm, and my, my uh, invitation is open to help you at any time uh, look at your profile and revise it to keep these things in mind, Lauren and everyone else, okay? And I'm going to show you specific examples. Michael, I want to know more about what you mean. Okay, the me, me, me approach. That's, why I was, that's what I was initially told. That's what you were told to do or uh, just clarify. I just want to make sure I understand. So, Michael, let me be clear for you. Okay, yes, told to do. Okay, uh, so let me be clear that uh, it depends on what you want out of the platform. I'm assuming that all of you here 
are looking for leads and sales. Is that right? If there's anybody here who's looking for something different, then I want to caveat everything I'm describing. I'm talking to you as business leaders, sales professionals, marketing professionals, folks who need to grow brand, drive leads and grow sales. I'm talking to you right now. Taylor says, my profile is basically blank because I wasn't sure the best way to execute this. So excited that we're talking about this. Awesome, Taylor. Good. So if you're not familiar with, with what's in your profile, I'm not going to go into all of these here, but take a look at the screen, okay? There are at least 13 areas here on the screen um, that uh, a LinkedIn profile is comprised of, okay? I'm going to walk you through a few of these. I'm going to show them quickly to you because I want to get to the on-screen ex examples as quickly as possible. If you're not familiar with the power of uh, LinkedIn's profile, the features that they give you. Let me walk you through that real quick, okay? So you all have the ability here in number one to upload a, a uh, cover image. I'm gonna talk to you more about that. You all have the ability to have a headshot. You have this area where you can describe who you are and who you do it for. I'm gonna tell you more about that here in a second. You have this area here where you can add contact information. Look, some of you are telling me, I want to sell more. I need more leads. Yet when I go to look at your LinkedIn profile, there's no way to get a hold of you. There's no cell phone number. There's no email. There's no website. So that number four there, I'm going to show you a little bit more about that. That's crucial. The about section is where you can talk about what you do and who you do it for. And again, a lot of people here are talking about themselves. I'm so great. Me, 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 right? Your target audience really doesn't give a hoot about that. They want to know what can you do for them. You have a spot where you can feature different media. So for some of you, this is product demonstrations. This is videos. Um, you know, for Marianne and her team, it's uh, different substrates that they can offer. For Grace and her team, I mean, th they do 3D printing. Uh, Grace, you know, you could be showing off the parts. You can be showing some cool designs that you've done. For anybody who is in 2D print, you can show examples, case studies, um, there's just a whole variety of things that you can do. Think about this as a landing page that you can use to show off what you can do for your customer. What a lot of people don't know here in, in seven is that folks can go to your profile and see what you've been doing, see what you've been commenting. So the reason I raise that, and I don't think that's true for anybody here, but some of you are spicy online. You know what I mean, right? You drop comments where it's a little bit edgy, a little bit spicy. Who are my spicy people? Go over there in the chat and tell me. You got to be careful because your potential customer, your prospect can see that here, okay? And sometimes when I do this training and I tell people, they're like, oh, crap, didn't realize that was the case, okay? So if you tend to be a little edgy in your comments, if you tend to be, uh, you know, if, if it can be interpreted in a way that might be rude or inconsiderate, just be careful because the, the sufficiently trained prospect who you want to engage will know to look here and we'll see that. And if they see something they don't like, and they're like, man, this, this guy, Dave, is a jerk, might go on and keep looking, okay? You have the ability to add all of your experience, including um, where you went to school, uh, boards that you're on, nonprofits that you're a part of. You have the ability to add skills so people can see what you're, what you're skilled at, what you can do for them. And recommendations down here in 12 are very important. You want to have some social proof that you're a real person, that you can help people, that you can deliver the outcomes. George P is saying, I like to bust a few butts. <laughs> I know, George, that's okay. I'm just giving everyone the insight in case people don't know that busting of butts can be seen here, okay? Just FYI. So you wanna have some recommendations. I'll talk to you more about that. And then you wanna list some accomplishments, okay? Now there's a lot here. Do I say that you need to go do these things all this evening? You could if you want, but you don't have to. I'm going to show you the ones that you should look at, the most critical ones, all right? Um, let me get rid of my nice drawings here. First of all, all of you want to make sure your profile is easy to find. I'm not going to go through all of these steps because you can get this later and follow these steps, but you want to make sure that your profile is visible, that it's publicly available um, because you can set it where it's private, okay? If you want to sell, if you want to market, if you want to get leads, I highly suggest that you open up that profile, okay? Facebook, other places like that, if you want to be private, understandable. I humbly submit to you, though, if you want recognition, if you want to be seen as a thought leader, open up that profile. Make sure that people can actually find you and see you, all right? Go back later, follow those steps, and make sure that you're viewable. 
The next really important thing is your headshot. 65% of buyers say an informative profile is an important factor. And as part of that factor, your profile picture comes into play. In fact, and I'll find the data for this, if you're sending messages through LinkedIn and you don't have a picture, you have, a, uh, I think, a dr uh, I can't remember how, yeah, it's dramatically less of an engagement rate. I'll find the exact data for you if you're interested. If you don't have a picture versus those of you who do, all right? I've added some tips here. Again, you can get these later. Jessica's gonna send out the, um, the PowerPoint here. Instructions on how to get your profile crafted correctly. You wanna have a semi-professional looking photo, usually from the shoulder up. Okay, it's very easy to do. Get someone else to take the picture for you. It's better than you know doing a selfie like that. But your phone, most, uh, I would say all modern phones have great resolution. Um, easy enough to have somebody uh, take a picture of you with your phone. Wear something somewhat professional, you know, work professional, um, and uh, use filters and other distractions like that lightly. Again, there's a little bit of creativity in here. So just take it under advisement. If you don't have a picture at all, that's something that you should immediately do. Now, the other thing that you'll notice behind here is this cover image. That's this right here, okay? A lot of you are using the default LinkedIn cover image. I'm gonna show you that here in just a minute when I go live with some of your profiles. So from a, an experienced uh, person using LinkedIn, when you find a profile that has no photo, that has no cover image, you immediately know that it doesn't smell like something is right or that that person hasn't put enough time into actually caring about their brand and social, okay? So I have some recommendations for you here on the photo. You can look and read at those, uh, about those later. It's also here in the guide. Um, I suggest you do something that establishes your gravitas. Um, maybe you speaking on stage, maybe you meeting with somebody uh, that's recognizable. Uh, maybe you in front of your, your, your 3D press, if you're here in the 3D community, or maybe um, the 2D folks, you know, show yourself there on your, uh, on your shop floor. Something that gives a visual indicator to the audience that you're real and is crafted from the perspective of what you can do for them. Does that make sense? There's a couple of other key considerations. I'm going to dive into these. Your headline on LinkedIn makes a big difference. I'm going to tell you what you mean or what I mean by that in just a second. Your summary, where you describe yourself, should be focused on your ideal user. Now you know why. At least some of you have made that new connection. Ah, I got to go in and rewrite that. I suggest that you all have your prior work experience. A lot of you right now are not even linked to your company page. I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. But if somebody's reading about you and wants to find out more about your company, some of you aren't even linking back to the company that you work for. Okay, so you're missing an opportunity there. I would like all of you to have at least one media highlight. That's that section where I said you can have a demo, a video, a slide deck, anything like that that's going to tell people more about what you do. And I suggest that all of you add some skills to your profile so your audience knows what you can do for them. The recommendation section is a little awkward for some people, but I would imagine all of you have at least one client that you could go out to and say, hey, would you be willing to write me a recommendation? Most people will do it. And some people, if you do a little uh, tit for tat in exchange, you know, and, and you write something nice about them, they'll have no problem giving you a recommendation. All right. Yeah. Phil is saying people buy from people. Absolutely. So again, the whole point of this, the whole point of what I'm trying to show you here is don't be this, get over to here and do it with intention in mind. All right. Um, let's see. Eileen says over here in LinkedIn, one of my salespeople does not like using LinkedIn because he feels like he will be bothering his clients. My goodness, Eileen, is, is that person here by chance? Um, I hope I can uh, break that uh, false belief. Eileen, I wonder why he feels that. Do you know why? Have you asked why like five times to try to get to the root of it? I'd be really interested. All right, so what I want to do now, is everyone ready? Give me a yes if you're ready. Load up LinkedIn, have it open in another browser window and have Zoom up somewhere else. Okay, looks like most people are ready. I'm going to do a live review. I want my brave volunteers. Um, Jessica, over in, let's see, I guess in Ring Central, Jess, if you can. I see you've pasted one URL in for Eileen, it looks like. 
go into the ring central and give me a few others as well. All right. And then um, for the rest of you, if you want me to take a look at your profile, please send it into the chat. Okay. If you don't know how to do that. Okay. It looks like I got, I got a few here. Um, if you don't know how to do that, I'll show you in a second, but I'm going to go pull Eileen and I'm going to pull Warren. They've given me theirs. And I'm going to load those up. I'm going to click on a few of the others that are coming through. Hey, Troy. Betsy. Chris. Okay. Any others? Okay, Troy. I got Troy. I got Warren. Jess, thank you. I got those. Okay, perfect. And so if my, um, if my view of LinkedIn here looks different than yours, folks, uh, the only reason for that is that they've uh, been rolling out the uh, updated user interface and a small percentage of people have that. I think it's somewhere around 30% now um, have that. So if it looks a little bit different, there may be some differences in our UI, but uh, function wise, everything that I'm describing is going to be the same. Okay. Most of it is just where things are on the screen or slight adjustments to, to the way things look. Okay. Let me see if I have a Chris. Um, all right. So, Okay, it looks like Joe's giving me one here. I don't know why that's not a link. Let me open that one up too. Yeah, give me your profile URL, folks. That's helpful, so I can click right on that. Um, I've got Bill now. All right, if anybody else... Okay, it looks like Phil came in. Let me do just a few more. Whoops, I opened up two Phil's. Give me one more, guys. Anybody else? Okay, let me show you. I, I see Jeff asking how to get the profile URL. So let me show you, folks. If you're looking at my screen... Look at my screen real quick here. What you want to do, and again, if your UI looks a little bit different, that's okay. What you want to do is you want to click right here on your picture, okay? And then up here in the browser bar, you see that right there? Just copy that and paste that into uh, the chat here. So I'm going to get Jackie, and I'm going to get Jeff. Okay, cool. I think this is enough. All right, so let me start with kind of the top of your LinkedIn profile, folks. The first thing that I suggest you all do, and I've mentioned this to you, is um, have a cover image and uh, make sure that your headshot is configured correctly. And I also want to make sure that you have a headline that's customer focused. Okay, I'm going to grab one more here. Thank you, Lauren. I see yours. I'm going to go ahead and grab that in here and paste it in. Okay, so I have plenty now. Um, so let me just run through these and I'm gonna focus on those first three areas. So Eileen has been through at least one of our other training sessions. So I would imagine that most of what she's got here is gonna be fairly dialed in. So I wanna call your attention to a few things. We're gonna be looking at the image here, the headshot, and this, which we call the headline, okay? So a couple things I want you to notice. So she's not using the default image, good. Um, she's got a professional headshot, good. And look at this, I want you to see this here. This is what we call the headline. She has written her headline from the perspective of her target market. What will she do for me potentially needing Eileen's help? Well, she's saying she's going to maximize my return on print, mailing, packaging, and opti-channel marketing. Well, look at that, right? Now, what most people do, including me, back in the day, I put my title. Oh, I'm awesome. Co-founder, Mindfire, president, whatever, right? It's important. But the reason why this is key is because every time you leave a comment, this is what people will see. They'll see your headshot, they'll see your name, and this right here. So it's like a little banner. It's like free advertising everywhere you go as you're engaging. One little tip, you want to write this down. Find thought leaders in your target market. When they post, go drop a comment, something thoughtful, more than just, yeah, I love this, or cool, right? Something thoughtful, take an opposing point of view, add something to what they said, contrast what they said with a real life experience. And what will happen if they're a thought leader and they get a lot of engagement, people will start liking your comment and connecting with you because of that comment. Now, think of it like this. You just hijacked some of their eyeballs and put a billboard right under their post. People are going to start to see that as the first thing they see when they, when they want to write a comment. They're going to see your comment 
your headline, your name, your picture first. That makes sense. Give me a yes if that just turned something on for you, all right? That's why this is so important. So let me see what else we have here. So Warren, um, okay, so he's got an image that talks about what they do. That's great. Uh, headshot. Uh, I work with marketing communication professionals to execute their customer engagement plans as effectively as possible, engaging all stakeholders. Okay, so he has recrafted his with the customer in mind. The only thing I would say, Warren, and again, this is difficult, is just remember that only a certain amount of this is going to show up. It changes based on whether somebody's looking at you on mobile versus uh, desktop. You know, to the degree that you can get your target audience and what you do for them closer to the front of that statement, we actually have a, um, in, the, in the guide, which you can get, we have a little template similar to kind of the way Eileen wrote hers that sometimes helps you reformat this to get that further to the front so that more people have a chance of seeing that. Okay, so here's Troy. Good job, Troy. Okay, so here's uh, Larry. Larry's got an image up here. So Larry, I would take an opportunity. This is, this, this is not the default. Oh, this might be the default image now with the new UI. Um, but I would take the opportunity, Larry, to have something up here that, like I said, establishes your credibility, talks about what you do, shows a picture of what you do. Here, leader in business solutions, Larry, I would say is not clear enough to me if I'm reading one of your comments. Leader in business solutions, I don't know what you do for me, right? We want to think about how do you help your target audience? Uh, Chris, Chris has been through this course before, so I would expect his is pretty well dialed in. All right. Uh, Bill, I believe, has also been through this course, if I recall correctly. So look at Bill's here. We help companies automate and streamline how they buy and manage print. That's probably what most people will see, right? So if that's most important to Bill, finding companies that want to automate and streamline how they buy and manage print, then he's going to catch someone's attention. All right, so that's why I'm saying this is so important right here. Uh, okay, Phil, I think, again, this is probably new in the UI. This is probably the default image, Phil. So I would take the opportunity to, uh, I mean, with what you do, I see data, I see, um, I see some sort of uh, like uh, leads or lists, uh, you know, visual representations of what you can do for people in terms of finding high quality uh, data and leads, all right? Uh, so chief executive officer at ABS Leads. So again, if, if you were the chief executive officer of LinkedIn, chief executive officer of, of um, Microsoft, and I'm saying the same thing to myself, right? To me. Then it might mean something to people. But Phil, I would humbly submit to you, consider rewriting this in a way where your ideal prospect looks at that and says, huh, I need to learn more about Phil. Okay? So that would be my suggestion there. I'll close that one up. Here's Jackie. So Jackie's got an image here. She's got her headshot. Her headline says, Printing, Direct Marketing, Mailing, and Promotional Solutions Provider. So Jackie, my suggestion would be, uh, is there a specific type of organization? Who do you want to dog whistle here? Who, who, who do you want reading this to say, oh, she's for me. I need to talk to Jackie. Jeff, okay, he's got multi-channel marketing, so we have an idea of what he does. Jeff says, helping small to medium-sized businesses, right? So we know... If I'm an SMB, I know, hmm, let me listen more to Jeff. And nonprofits, okay, ret retain and acquire new clients. So probably this is what I would see. So if I'm an SMB or I'm a nonprofit and I want to retain and acquire new clients, this is somebody I'd probably click through to read more about. He has more here with direct mail, pearls, multi-channel. That's good. One more here. Let's look at Lauren. Okay, Lauren, uh, I would suggest um, something up here, something ABCO-related, uh, you know, you've got a lot of good imagery on your website. I've seen that. So even something that you already have on your website, take the opportunity to use your banner here to brand you and your organization a little bit more. Michael saying yes, and never knew that. Which part, Michael? Which part? Uh, Lauren, good headshot. And Lauren says, Abco is a global print partner delivering communications throughout the modern workplace. Okay, not too bad, Lauren. I would just... Um, you know, is there, is there a vertical or set of customers or customer type that you could dog whistle or call out there that would get my attention? Anything like that? Um, I, I would want to think more about this once I know a little bit more about who you want to actually attract, okay? Any questions here so far? In LinkedIn, oh, over there in Zoom, okay? A lot of you are, 
are a little bit further along. I sense that many of you have either been through our class before or already have this checklist. Great job. Uh, Michael saying that that was about grabbing customers and having their eyes on you when you comment on a thought leader's post. Yeah, that's a strategy that I, uh, we teach in, in, our, in our class as well. Okay, so just to review, make sure you have this image, get a professional-ish looking headshot, and revise your headline to be customer focused, okay? Everyone got those three? Now, let me show you a few more things. Most of you are making this mistake. Now, you may have a legitimate reason for doing this. You probably don't, but you might. If you look over here on the right-hand side, see where it says people also viewed? LinkedIn is smart, right? Lauren, they know who you are. They know who looks at you. They know what, you, what they think you do. They're recommending, they're sending people looking at your profile to your competitors, right? That's what this is. This is just like your Amazon. People who bought this also bought that. They're saying people who look at Lauren probably also should look at these people here, okay? Now, unless you can think of or have a compelling reason, why should we be sending folks to our competitors? Lauren, I recommend you turn that off. All right, let's see. Jeff is doing well. Jeff has already turned it off. What LinkedIn recently did is if you have it turned off, what they do is they say, here's other people you should connect with, people you might want to connect with, which is different. Lauren's asking, how do you turn it off? It's in the checklist, Lauren. Um, and uh, depending on which uh, user interface version you see, the instructions vary a little bit. But grab the guide. Jessica will send that later. And uh, let's make sure to turn that off. So Phil's got it on. So, Phil, you might be inadvertently sending folks to other data providers. Um, Bill, you've got it on. You might be sending folks to other uh, competitors. Uh, Chris is good. Uh, Laura, Larry, you've got yours on still. You want to turn yours off. Uh, let's see. Warren, you've got yours on. I would suggest you turn it off. And Eileen is good. Yeah, I had a feeling Eileen would be good. All right. So... That's a big one there. Also, let me just call your attention to, um, look at this list here. So on the point of having a headshot, who stands out here is kind of odd or weird, right? I mean, he looks like this is a student, of course, but doesn't have a headshot. So that's why I'm saying it's so important. If you were, if you were going to pick between clicking on, uh, you know, Adam or Daryl, uh, the data show that most people would click on the one with the headshot, okay? So that's why, professional headshot, that's why I've said it's so important to look at that. Now, let me call your attention to a few other things here. I'm just gonna use Warren, who's uh, over there in New Zealand. Warren, when I click on his contact info, this is where I wanna focus on for a minute. When you click on that, so Warren has company website and email, okay? Let me go look at Eileen for a second here. Contact info. If I want to get a hold of her. Okay, so she's got her company website. She's got a phone number. She's got an address, and she's got an email. I, I argue, I submit to you folks, that if you want leads and sales, you got to make it easy for folks to get a hold of you in a way that's comfortable for them. Add your cell phone number. Add your email. Put ways that you want people to engage with you there in that contact info. Let me look at a few more. Let me see what Larry has. Larry's got a company website and email. Okay, no phone number. Maybe you want to add that, Larry. I bet Chris has his phone number. Yep, Chris has his phone number. Let's see what Bill has. Uh, Bill's got his mobile. Okay, good. Let's see, Phil, what do you have? Uh, Phil's got his email. Okay, so if you want folks primarily to reach out to you via email as you grow your social influence, that's fine. But if you want phone calls, I would humbly submit that you consider adding your phone number. Uh, Jeff's got his mobile. Okay, so, so that's something that you should really look at. Again, if you go to the guide, um, we make the recommendations of what you should have there minimally in order to... Um, Give people who are viewing you a way to get in touch with you when they're ready. Now, let me look at this about section here. Okay, this about section, what I recommend you do, if you were listening earlier, 
is recraft this in a way that speaks to your ideal customer. So let me look at Eileen's real quick here. So she's saying, as a career sales executive, I specialize in creative solutioning. I'm hands-on, highly collaborative. So Eileen, let's see, focused on detail, committed to providing customer service. Eileen, the only thing I would suggest, and look, she's got her phone number there too. That's also something we, we advise. So Eileen is, uh, is headed in the right direction, I think, here. What I would suggest, Eileen, is perhaps break this up a little bit, make it easier to read. Uh, you know, put some spacing in between, maybe some bullets. Also remember, people are going to be looking at it on mobile, so see how it looks on mobile. Uh, let me see what Warren's got here. Okay. Uh, Warren, I might suggest email and phone number down here, or a little note about how to reach you, because people also will look there. Okay, Troy. I, this is interesting. Troy is kind of following the pattern that I use. Uh, very interesting, Troy. So Troy's got this heading... What I or we do to help you, um, what we do, who I work with, who we work with, um, what's the first step to engage Troy, and if you're ready to chat, here are the different ways to get a hold of him. Do you all see that? Give me a yes. That's, a, that's an interesting template. I use one similar to that. Understand that? Okay. Uh, here is... Okay, so tr uh, Larry, here's an opportunity for you. So Larry's talking about how he's an experienced president history of working in the printing and promotional products industry, um, has a bachelor's degree in chemistry. So what I would do, uh, Larry, is I would reconsider how to recraft this in a way that gets my attention, be creative here, and tell me about the solutions that you can provide me. Give some customer examples, uh, some data, some metrics. What have you been able to do? Um, Lauren says, I don't see an about section on my profile. Let me see, Lauren, where you are. Um, you may not... You may not have configured it, uh, Lauren. You want to add that. You, you don't have it on um, or you haven't added anything there, okay? So if, if you don't have it on at all, I would highly suggest all of you add that. So again, the key point I'm trying to make here is make sure that that about section is customer focused, target market focused, okay? Yeah, you can talk about the accolades that you've received, but I would suggest you do it from the, from the vantage point of the customer, okay, if you can. Uh, let's see. A couple other things here. I'm just going to um, click on this here. Does everyone see this? This is uh, Lawrence. I'm going to click on Abco. Let's see what happens when I click on that. This is where I was saying that some of you aren't linked to your company. So um, I, I think, Lauren, what happened here is that you're not linking your job history to ABCO correctly. So what should happen is it should go here, right? Is this the right ABCO? Let me know, um, Lauren, if I got this one right. So a lot of you, yeah, it's the right one. So Lauren, I would suggest you go back and fix that. You'll be able to tell because this will then have the logo for your company. So let's see what Jeff has. Okay, so Steven's printing. So here again, let me click on that and see where we go. Okay, so look, Jeff, even for you, you're not linking back to your Stevens Printing LinkedIn page. Missed opportunity to drive traffic there, okay? So what happens is when you type in your employer, whether you own the company or you work for the company, it doesn't matter. Uh, when you type in your employer, there's IntelliType, you know, IntelliSense, whatever it's called, where if you type Stevens Printing, it should show you an option to connect to the official page, okay? If you, do, you can type anything you want. You could say, I work for Clowns Incorporated, right? You can type anything you want in there, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to accept it. But what I suggest you do is actually link it to your company page. Michael's saying, what can be done if the company we previously worked at is no longer in business? Yeah, with regards to... Yeah, so sometimes you can't connect it. Sometimes you can't, Michael. Uh, let's see what Jackie's got here. Okay, see, this is how it should show up. Your logo. When I click on this now, if I say, oh, I want to learn more about Jackie and what she does, I click on the company, and any good person who knows how to use LinkedIn does this. If you don't do it, you will eventually. And now I'm on their page. See, I can go to their about. I can see who their people are, videos that they have, things like that, right? So that's why that's important. You're missing an opportunity, and you're also showing people who are in the know that you haven't taken time 
to fix yourself up. So same thing with you, Phil. That's not linked up. Um, let's see. Uh, Bill, you've got yours. Chris, I'm sure you have yours, right, my friend? Yeah, you do. Uh, let's take a quick look over here. Larry, Troy, yep. Uh, Warren. Uh, yeah, Warren's got his last one there. Okay, Eileen, I'm sure you do as well. Am I right? Yeah, you do as well. Okay, so that's really important. Does that make sense, everyone? You want to make sure you do that. Um, now, a couple more things I want to point your attention to here, and then I'm going to uh, take a quick pause for just a moment and see if there's any questions. Um, the recommendation section here. You see this? Everyone see this? So Eileen has a recommendation, and it's from 2013, so seven years ago. Uh, let me see, Warren. Warren, do you have any recommendations? Okay, Warren, I would recommend you get a recommendation. Uh, Troy, let's see what you have. And then I'm going to make a point here about this, okay? Uh, Troy has one from 2016. Okay, so a couple things here. Remember, the, the, the reason why this is important is people are judging you, okay? Just the way it is. They're judging the book by its cover, and that happens to be your profile. They want to know, is this someone I can, I can like? Is this someone that I should get to know? Is this someone I can trust? No like and trust. And the social proof by getting people to give you recommendations, the data show adds significant credibility to your profile. Now, if your recommendation is from many years in the past, that can show the educated social buyer that you haven't put time into your profile. I would recommend having one from more or less uh, recent times, say in the past year or two, okay? So if you've got something from four years ago, eight years ago, 10 years ago, uh, take an opportunity to update that, all right? Ask for a few more and get something that's a little bit more, more recent. So I see Chris saying, I've listened to your teaching, um, but don't check my college transcripts. All right, buddy, <laughs> I won't. So all of you, let's see, Bill, you've been in business a long time, so you should have plenty of opportunities, plenty of clients to be able to go back to. So Bill's got one from uh, six years ago. So I, what I would do, Bill, is get some from your top clients, all right? Um, get some from people who are going to say uh, the kinds of things that you want your target market to key in on and say, oh, if that worked for Bob, will Bill's company also do the same for me? Does that make sense? Give me a yes if you're understanding that. Does that make sense, everyone? I want to make sure you're following what I'm saying there. I'm going to do more here, but I want to make sure for, for those of you who might have to drop out soon... I want to make sure you know a few things, additional resources here that we can provide you um, that give you the help that you need um, to build out this whole process here, okay? Don't worry. I'm going to go back into LinkedIn here in just a second. So this part that I'm showing you of establishing your brand, which is what you see here on the screen of the, of the four-piece social selling framework, this is really important, but all of these other pieces also come into play. And so if you'd like to learn more about how to apply that whole framework, how to apply it either for your organization or maybe your sales team, maybe you think, shoot, my sales team doesn't know this. I need to get them on this. Um, if you want to do it, maybe you want to offer this as a service to clients. Think about some of you who have clients uh, that might need to learn how OptiChannel social sales and marketing works. I want to give you some tangible next steps because I know I'm a little past the hour and we've got the schedule for another 30 minutes, I think. But I know some of you are thinking you might need to leave soon. So I want to make sure you know about all of this. Um, Joe, who I'm going to bring on here in just a second, um, uh, and his team have set aside time in the next week to talk to you about this stuff, okay? Um, and if you want to discuss how you can apply what we've talked about here to grow your leads, and grow your sales, whether that be for your organization or for some of you, if you want to offer this as a service to your clients, there's a lot of different types of companies here with us today. Joe and his team uh, invest probably hundreds of hours every month in helping folks like you. Many of you know that. But if you haven't taken, it, taken advantage of this opportunity to talk with Joe and talk with our team about this, um, I want to make sure you do that. So. We've set aside time in the next week. Joe and his team have set aside time in the next week where we can talk to you more about this if this is something you need help applying. I am going to jump back into LinkedIn. Don't worry. I want to show you a few more things. 
But I want to make sure that before you drop off, if any of you have to drop off, take the opportunity to uh, speak with us. Go to that URL, mindfiremarketing.com forward slash yes. Jess, if you don't mind, put that in all of the locations, Zoom and, and LinkedIn. Um, first come, first serve in terms of these appointments, okay? And um, if we want, if you want to apply this in a deeper way into your business, into your sales and your marketing, then let's talk further. So who, who is this for? Let me just clarify what I'm offering here and what Joe and his team can help you do. First of all, if you want to use what we're talking about and you want to accelerate your adoption of this within your company to help your organization uh, put your arms around social selling and use it to break through this tough time that we're in, then this conversation is for you, okay? Uh, secondly, some of you might also want to offer this as a service to your clients. Now, uh, for Grace and her company, you know, they do 3D printing. Probably doesn't apply to Grace and her company. But for those of you who are offering marketing solutions, marketing services to your customers, have you considered, like, like Chris, Chris G, who's here, or, or, or Larry, um, would this be something that you would want to offer your clients? If that's something that you think is useful, we can have that conversation as well. So those are the two things. Joe, did you want to add anything here uh, before I, I talk a little bit more about what else we can do to help folks? Hey, Dave. Yeah, absolutely. Um, interestingly, uh, this morning, I've been in several meetings since 5 a.m. with customers. Uh, and one, one meeting really impacted me. <clears throat> and I was talking with one of our customers who's working with LinkedIn and also uh, getting ready to launch their own self-promotion program. But he said, you know, I've been sending emails, you know, personal emails. I've been making calls and I've just got received no traction whatsoever. And I, I asked him, I said, why do you think that is? And he said, I'm not really sure. Well, there's really about three reasons. One, people are busier than ever. So unless you're on their radar to offer something of value and you're viewed as a critical resource, really everything Dave's been positioning today in this session, uh, they often won't answer your call or your email or make time for you. Two, uh, people are stressed trying to find revenue because many companies have seen their revenue drop during COVID. So if it isn't about revenue and my customers, I'm not talking to anyone. And three, you need more than just the telephone and email to get on people's radars. That's why today's session is so darn important about getting on radars. But I would also submit to you that you have to make that investment in a quality self-promotion program every week, something new going out. And you know, there was a study from DMA a uh, year ago that said B2B customers want to see three to five pieces of high value content before they grant you or your sales rep an appointment to talk about how you can help them. So I just leave those thoughts with you. And if you need help uh, with some of the strategies, I also saw a question today about, I need, uh, I need to move my opportunities forward. I have opportunities, but I don't know where to take them. These are the types of ways that myself and the team can help you. So reach out, schedule a meeting, and uh, you know, we'll go to work with giving you the secret sauce for uh, generating those engagement and appointments that you all, all desperately need. And a final thought, another customer meeting this morning said, well, I've sent three or four email you know, waves out uh, using a self-promotion program, and I really haven't had any really good opportunities yet. Two important points. It does take a few waves to get on people's radar and providing good high-value content before they start to raise their hand and say, I need your help. And two, subject lines, the messaging and the body copy of your emails and the associated content all play together in an integral part to drive folks to really engage and download. And I can help you with that as well. All right, thanks, Dave. Cool, Joe. Thank you, folks. Um, and and uh, if you're curious about the training that I mentioned, if that's something I see, by the way, Taylor, you already uh, got a meeting there on the calendar with us. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, we have a six-week training course. Um, actually starts next week. And so you might already have access to this training through your MindFire membership or subscription. Uh, if you don't know, uh, go to that URL there at the bottom, mindfiremarketing.com forward slash yes. If you want to participate in this training and Jessica and Joe will, will let you know if you have access to this already. If you don't, 
um, then we can let you know what the uh, what the members only rate for this would be. But this training is a six week course. Some of you have been through an iteration of this, um, but it's a six week course where we go further into a lot of what we're talking about. Uh, we're going to tell you how to find high value content, like what Joe was just describing, um, how to find that kind of content and actually repurpose it for yourself. Because one of the most time consuming parts of this whole process is finding high value content. There are some strategies that allow you to get there much more quickly, whether you're sharing it through email or through LinkedIn. Week two, we show you how to actually pump that out into the world to provide that value. Um, we go more deeply in how to build your, your profile. I am going to get back to that here in just a minute, but we spend a whole week on just that. Um, we talk about how to actually craft posts on LinkedIn that are going to get the engagement that you're looking for, that are going to get the attention that you want. Um, we talk about how to write content, whether it be for LinkedIn or an email that motivates the recipient or the viewer to actually take action. And so there's a lot there that you can learn to actually get people to start to engage you. And then one of the things that uh, is eye-opening for a lot of people is what we call OptiChannel custom audiences. I don't have time to go into all of that, but it's a way of um, when someone bumps into you, whether it be um, your web page or when your landing page is something like that, of being able to go out there and kind of follow them around in different places and be in front of them. And it's very inexpensive. So I'm, we'll show you how to do that as well. Again, if you want to join this class, some of you may already have access to it. You may have just missed it. Um, some of you uh, might not have it as part of your membership, but we can help you with that. Go to mindfiremarketing.com forward slash yes. Let us know if you're interested in that. We'll figure that out for you. Why is it important to go through that? And I think I've made this point already in terms of your LinkedIn profile. 81% of buyers are more likely to engage with you if you have a strong professional brand. That's why we're doing this class today to help you get there on LinkedIn. The other thing we're going to teach you uh, as we go deeper in, in that training is that if you're a sales professional and you, if you view the profiles, just like I did today where I brought up all of you on the screen, if you view the profiles of at least 10 people at each of your target accounts, you're 69% more likely to exceed quota. I know it seems just like clicking around, but when you do all of this right, that's why this is so important. When you do all of this right, it has a meaningful impact on your revenue. You're 70% more likely to get an appointment or an unexpected sale. How many of you want unexpected sales? Drop a one in the chat, wherever you are, if you want unexpected sales. If you are a member of a LinkedIn group, that's why I gave those to you. Michael wants an unexpected sale. Is he the only one? Okay, Lauren, Warren. Okay, so we'll show you how to do that. You can't just join the group and then expect those sales to come in. There's a way that you do that. So 70% more likely to get an unexpected um, appointment or sale if you're part of a group. And if you engage in the right way, reps that exceed quota get 70%, 74% more engagement on their posts than those that don't exceed quota. Okay, so if you're putting content out there and nothing's happening, you got to learn out, you got to learn why that's happening and you got to fix it because you're more likely to hit your sales targets when you get it right. Again, you want some time to talk more about this? Mindfiremarketing.com forward slash yes. Um, I, I've mentioned this to you already, but this, if you're thinking this won't work for me because I'm too big, I'm too small, uh, we're too old, we're too young, um, you know, whatever the case may be. I'm not a printer. I'm not an agency. This, it doesn't matter, folks. All industries, all different types of organizations, anyone with a message who realizes that the old ways are obsolete, this will work for so if this is training that you need for your team, if you want to go deeper, um, set up the time to talk to Joe and to Jessica on our team. We're going to give you an overview of, of that training, of any software that you might need to do that. Um, you probably already have the software if you're a MindFire uh, member. And we'll tell you kind of what you need to do to get the best results in the short amount of, shortest amount of time. And again, this might be something you want to do for your own organization, or it might be something you want to offer to your clients. Okay. So please uh, go to that URL. Jessica, put that back in the chat once more. I am going to go back live into LinkedIn here in just a second, but I want to make sure you also remember these resources here. Just go ahead and put in both in uh, Zoom and at LinkedIn uh, the URL for getting some time on our calendar here. And I want to make sure you connect with me on LinkedIn. Okay, I gave you this earlier. But specifically, I want to make sure if you're in Zoom right now and you're not part of that members-only LinkedIn group, 
knowing what I just told you about the data, that you're more likely to get an unexpected sale if you're part of a LinkedIn group. If you want to experiment with what that looks like in a safe place, join the private group. Don't be afraid to post. Don't be afraid to engage there. It's a safe place. Once you learn this process, now you can go out into the other groups and have more confidence in your approach. So at least join that group. Jess, go ahead and um, drop the URL for this again in the chat as well. Uh, join the COVID-19 print group. There are leads in there, folks. We do everything we can to bring um, opportunities to the 2D and 3D print communities there in that group. And I've given you my cell phone number. Let me see if anybody's, how many people have texted? One, two, three, four, five. About 10 of you have texted so far, okay? We're doing everything we can to help you. So Jess, go ahead and throw that back in there. Good. Looks like Jess is throwing those in. And one more thing I want to give you, and then I'm going to get back to the questions and live into LinkedIn here. When I was talking to the team about how to help you in Q4, how to help you put meaningful revenue into your companies, either by using OptiChannel for your own lead generation and sales, or for those of you who are selling it to your customers, uh, actually, Joe raised this. He said, you know what? Most people don't realize everything OptiChannel can do. They don't realize the other channels, the other optimal channels. And so what we did is we quickly put together this demo. Some of you might have seen this already, but if you see it here on the screen, Jess, if you don't mind, put that link into Zoom and LinkedIn as well. Uh, it's at marketingsmissinglink.com. And it allows you to experience it. It allows you to experience an opti-channel communication workflow, a very simple one, but it uses text messaging. It uses voicemail. It uses email. You'll see all of the touches, okay? It's a small demo site for you. She'll drop it into chat. She'll drop it into Zoom and LinkedIn. Go try that out. Share that with your teams. If you're already a MindFire client, which all of you are, um, and if you have our uh, DaVinci software, we can also install this in your account for you. So if you want to go out and demo to clients what this is all about, uh, this is a great demonstration tool. You can hook it up on your website. You can send it out to people. Um, this one is the one that we use, but we can install it in your account. And then you can put your own branding around it and all that good stuff so that your customers and prospects can experience it as well. Okay. So take a moment if you want to go do that uh, or just write it down, marketingsmissinglink.com. Jess will also include that in the follow-up email. Um, that's, that's something that I think um, all of you will, will get something out of. So if you want to take some time, I see Troy's requesting time. I see a few others of you as well. Mindfiremarketing.com forward slash yes. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and talk further about that. One more piece of data that I want to give you, and then I'm going to open up for questions. I want you to consider why everything that we're talking about is, is more important than ever. Why you need to build these skills into your people, why you need to build them into yourself and why offering this to your clients potentially is, is life-changing for them. Virtual selling, I argue, is here to stay. In fact, a recent survey of LinkedIn, 80% of sales, professional salespeople have somewhat or completely shifted over to virtual selling because of COVID-19, obviously. Of those respondents, 57% believe the new social selling model is better than the old approach. I think that number is going to go up. As more of you go through training like this, you're going to learn that, in fact, it has advantages. Almost half expect to continue selling this way beyond 12 months. Okay? So designing a sales model and a marketing model that embraces this reality, get your LinkedIn profile right. Do those other parts of the process. It's not just a nice to have. I think it's an imperative for us. And if you act now and realize the advantage that you can have content deficient platform like LinkedIn, the, the advantage that that gives you, um, if th that's a significant opportunity for you. If you, don't, if you don't step up and do it now, I think the reality is, is that you run the very real risk of being um, left behind. And so that's what I want you to think about. Think about the opportunity that you have, the transition to this kind of virtual Social selling has been accelerated by the pandemic. It was already there, right? But it has now significantly accelerated. And I think the other thing that, that I notice as I look across our client community is that there's this growing divide between buyers on one hand and sellers on the other. 
And what we noticed is at the beginning of, of COVID-19, this actually, I can send you this data. Sellers, so that's many of us, right? Increased their email outreach by 59%. So 59% more emails going out. Yet the buyers, the people on the other end, de decreased their consumption of our emails, your emails, 25 to 30% when compared to pre-COVID benchmarks. So my point in saying that is, is if the current uh, sales model, before it was interrupted by COVID, already wasn't working well for you, or if you, or if you could sense that the world had changed, this new virtual sales climate has made it completely unviable to continue to work in the old ways. So this moment, I'm arguing, calls for something new. And that's what I'm trying to show you here um, as we uh, endeavor to you know, recover revenue and, and regrow our organizations back to where they were. So mindfiremarketing.com forward slash yes. I'm going to um, get some questions here from Jess over here in chat. Again, if you want to experience the uh, OptiChannel demo, here's the link on the screen. If you want some of our time, there's the link there at the bottom. So Jess has pulled together a bunch of questions. Um, let's see. So from Tracy, Tracy says, how do you write the about section? Should it be a landing page with a call to action? And should you add a contact, contact method to the cover art? So let me show you what Tracy's asking here. And I'm going to pull up Tracy on the screen. Tracy. There she is. Okay, so here's Tracy. Wow, beautiful picture back here, Tracy. So Tracy's asking about the about section here. So she's saying, how do you write it? Could it be a landing page with a call to action? Should you add a contact method to the cover art? So um, I haven't read this, Tracy. Um, it, it looks like it's well spaced out. So at least from that perspective, I can tell that you've put some time into it, definitely. I think your call to action, I can see it down here, um, is, is good, is sufficient, but I would want to study it a little bit more to give you um, some more input. But I would say that the, the way you write that is uh, very similar to what you have. As long as everything that you've talked about here is focused on the benefit you can provide your ideal client, then you will likely be hitting the mark. Now, um, one thing that I recommend, and some of you probably won't do this, but uh, somebody said it earlier in chat, people buy from people. Tracy, you have a, you have a remarkable personality. I've, I, I know because I've, I've seen some of your videos. I would recommend to many of you that you let that person, personality shine through in your profile, okay? For some people, when they look at a stiff uh, profile that's written in corporate speak and jargon versus one that you can tell is a real life person, again, people buy from people. So I haven't read yours closely enough, but I would just encourage you, allow your unique personality, all of you, but I'm talking to Tracy right now, allow your personality to shine through. Uh, should you add a contact method to the cover art? Yeah, that's something that I would suggest you experiment with. So some people actually put a call to action here in their cover art, a phone number, a website, some next step that people can take. I would say you definitely should uh, test that. Marianne's asking, how do I attract the right level of people in the market? By right, I mean above the line decision makers. So uh, Marianne, that's something that we do cover um, in our training. So she's asking, let me bring that back up here. Where is the model? Uh, right here. So Marianne is asking, if you, look, if you can see the screen here, uh, that's something that we teach. I think Marianne did have to drop off, but if other... Others of you are wondering that. If you look at the screen, um, right here in this third part of the screen here, you can see, I'm going to circle it. Connecting with the right decision makers is key in this process. So there is a way to do that. Um, it has to do with intentionally reaching out to folks in your target market. And um, you, can, you don't have to buy Sales Navigator. It's another LinkedIn product. You can do this all for free, okay, within LinkedIn. So there is a way to do that. And it, it involves basically finding the people that you want to be in touch with. There's a way to search for them, the right titles, the right position, the right seniority, and then simply connecting with them with the right kind of outreach message. Uh, Jeff is saying, how to best go about posting short informational in industry tips on different operational management methods? 
Uh, Jeff, are you asking um, what's the best way to actually write that kind of content? Jeff, if you can go back into the Zoom chat and just let me know if that's your question, I'll, I'll, I'll help you answer that. That is something that we that we do uh, when we go into that six-week training. If any of you are, are interested in that, it starts next week. Uh, we go into depth around how you publish content. So that might be the answer to your question, at least for now. Um, let me see. Next question here. Thank you, Jess, for pulling all these. I appreciate it. Craig is asking, how can you manage content and time so posts remain authentic and genuine without overly draining time? So, Craig, uh, maybe you can give me a little context in Zoom or in LinkedIn, wherever that came in. Do you find that creating content takes a lot of time or is draining for you? Let me know if that's what you're getting at, and then I can give you some, some better responses. Erwin says, ideas and thoughts on our to present my profile that creates interest for prospective opportunities. The only part I don't understand there is our, but I think um, that might be a typo. Let me um, pull yours up, buddy. It's good to see you here. Uh, I'm gonna go back into uh, LinkedIn. Erwin I've known for uh, many years, but I haven't been to his profile in a while. Let me see what he's got here. Okay, so Erwin, if you're still here, Erwin, are you here? Yep, Erwin looks like he's here. So a couple things, Erwin, I would point out to you, your um, cover image here. I mean, my goodness, Cobra, you've got remarkable capability, uh, equipment. I'm sure you have some B-roll, some, some photos that you could use there. Um, so anybody who is uh, somewhat versed in LinkedIn is going to be able to tell that you haven't um, taken the time to uh, get your homepage here on LinkedIn set up correctly, at least from that perspective. So that would be the first simple thing, Erwin, that I would say. Good shot. Uh, headshot there, uh, VP technology at Cobra. Again, uh, big opportunity, I think, here for you, Erwin, and your team would be to come up with a way um, to modify this headline to tell me exactly uh, what you can do and who you do it for. And again, in the guide that Jess will send out, we have a little template that you could use to inspire uh, how you write that so that if I read it, Erwin, I know, oh, I fit in his target audience. I may not be thinking those terms exactly, but I think Erwin's somebody I want to know. And he's someone I want to know because he can do something to help me. So I'd recommend you change that. Because again, Erwin, when you put this practice into play and you're going and you're commenting on posts, right? This is what people are going to see. Let me show you all what I mean by that. Let me, um, let me go to LinkedIn here. Just make sure everybody understands the power of this. So let me find a post here. Uh, that has some comments. Yeah, who, who did this one? Oh, so if I go here, look, this is one that uh, th this gentleman here, Brian, who we actually we had on the show a little while ago posted. And see, there is a, a comment. It's already highlighted right here. Do you see that? Let me, um, let me do that for you, okay? You see this right here from Rosemary? So when I say go find an industry thought leader, someone who publishes content on a regular basis, who gets good engagement, if you write... A comment there, um, in this case, she's not writing very much. <laughs> it would be easy to outrank this comment. But if you write a thoughtful comment, you will get people connecting with you and engaging with you from within your target market for free because you're writing, let me show you, the coattails of this post, right? So he's got... Uh, 38 comments, 110 engagements. You can already see his engagement is, is starting to climb there. The reason why your headline, Irwin, and for the rest of you is so important is you see the headshot here, you see the name, and you see a bit of that headline, right? So if it just says, what did yours say? Um, ba -ba -ba -bum. It said, whoops, I'm drawing on my screen. It said VP technology at Cobra, right? So somebody who's in your target market, Irwin, Unless that is what's going to attract them to you, I would suggest you rephrase that in a way where that headline gets their attention. Erwin, does that make sense? Uh, I see Betsy saying, uh, can you show us Tracy's page on LinkedIn? Yeah, I can go back to Tracy. Erwin says, yes. Corey says, I have to drop off. Great call. No problem. Uh, Erwin, let me see what else here. Um, Erwin, I would also suggest here, and I haven't read it in great detail, but um, I, I would guess you've been on LinkedIn for a while. Is that true, Erwin? Let me know if you've been on LinkedIn for a while. Um, yeah, you have. Okay. 
So this is this is reminiscent of the days when uh, LinkedIn was mostly a uh, electronic uh, CV or or online resume. The way this is written speaks to me in that sense. It doesn't tell me as your prospective customer the incredible things that Cobra can do for me, the incredible things that Erwin you can do for a company like like ours if we were a prospective client of yours. So I would take time to immediately think about how to rewrite that in a way where it's demonstrative of the value that you could provide your target audience. Does that make sense, Erwin? Bill says, great call. Thanks for your time today. No problem, Bill. If you have to drop off, we'll send you the recording. I know a lot of people get value out of this interactive q and I'm going to do another 10 minutes at least, um, but you'll get the rest in the recording. Bill, great job here. Um, in, or I'm sorry, Erwin, great job in the featured. Although, is this the thing that you want most people to know about you? This is the media section, folks, that I talked to you about. You should take the opportunity to at least have one media item um, um, highlighted here, okay? Now, I haven't looked at this in detail, Erwin, but is this the most important thing, the most important next step that you think people should know about you or engage with? If it is, then fantastic. If not, consider what you could put there. Um, Erwin says, I haven't had a chance to update in the last few months. No problem. I hope, I hope this is helpful to you. Um, okay, your link to your company page. Let me see. You've got, so you're, you're most known for VDP, digital printing, and color management. Are those the most important items to you? Okay. Um, accomplishments. Erwin, you are an accomplished, you're an accomplished dude. I would put more of your accomplishments there. Okay. Um, that, that's somewhere where you can, you can add more to catch people's attention. And then the other thing is, Erwin, you know, you've been, how long have you been at Cobra now? It feels like I was a child when you were at Cobra. Yeah, 14 years, right? So you've been there quite a bit. I would venture to guess that you've got hundreds of happy customers that you could at least get two or three recommendations from that you could list here, okay? So that would be another thing. Yeah, you've been there 14 years, yeah. Okay, so Erwin, hopefully that was helpful to you. Um, there's more we could do, um, but those would be some of the highlights. David's saying, I want a LinkedIn profile for our business. Is it hard to set up? No, it's not. I'd like to get started on that. Yeah, not hard, David. Um, Eileen is saying, I want to create more of a draw to our wide-ranging capabilities and my significant skills. Okay, let me go back. Did I lose Eileen? I may have. Eileen, are you still here? Um, let me know in the chat. Let me see what else I can uh, quickly recommend here for you, Eileen. Eileen, are you still here? Uh, Eileen is over in LinkedIn, I think, right? Eileen, let me know if you're still here in LinkedIn. Warren says, thank you again. I have to run and get ready for the day. Awesome. Warren, was this helpful to you? Please let me know if it was helpful to you. Please let us know. Okay, so um, Eileen is asking a question that probably a lot of you have. How do you sh demonstrate more of what it is that you and your organization can do? W one, one place that I would highly recommend you do that is right here. Again, this is the featured media section of your profile, okay? Warren says he's already made some changes to his profile. Wonderful, Warren. If you have a variety of services you can offer, heck, even if you only have one service you can offer, use this section here to highlight those. It can be an image. It can be a video. You can link to a, a landing page. You can link to a post that you wrote. Here, um, Eileen, it, it, you're talking about Snoop Dogg and Ice Cream Parlor. I'm not sure, and forgive me, I haven't read it in depth, but... I would humbly submit, use this to demonstrate the one or two capabilities or significant skills that you're describing in an interactive way that'll give people more insight into what you do. All right. Hopefully that, that's just one section. Michael saying, unfortunately, I need to leave, but hopefully you can answer my question again. Thanks for your time. Uh, Michael, which, what was your question before you leave? Real quick. Um, please let me know your question. I'll get to it so you can hear it. Um, oh, it looks like you answered. Can this... LinkedIn information from today, work for someone that sells B2C, yes. Or is this primarily B2B? Michael, what do you sell B2C? Remind me, and then I'll answer you more. Melanie is saying, I'm in the UK and signing off. Thanks so much. Super helpful and can't wait to make more changes with my team. Melanie, thank you for being here. I appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So Michael's a photographer. So Michael, a couple of interesting things real quick. Um, so there is a growing portion of LinkedIn that is... Uh, tapping into B2C, uh, business to consumer marketing, sales, and content. So I would not, um, I would not uh, leave it off the table. What kind of photographer are you? Talking like, like uh, family photographer, weddings, th those types of things? Michael, let me know specifically 
uh, because yes, there's plenty of room for that on uh, LinkedIn. The other place I would start to look in your case would be um, Instagram and Facebook, although I imagine you're already there. But if you switch from the, the mindset of being a consumer in those platforms to being a producer, the same stuff we talked about, uh, you will um, you will get more engagement. Michael is for portraits and commercial products. Yeah, I would definitely continue to lean into LinkedIn. Absolutely. Especially with the new stories feature. We didn't even touch on that today. Um, there's, there's potential there for you. So Michael, I know you have to leave. Thank you for being here. Uh, Mark is saying, is it best practice to accept all requests to be linked up or should I be selective? Okay, you're going to get varying opinions on this. I'm going to give you my opinion. So Mark, and others of you are probably uh, wondering that too. So like what Mark is asking over here, when you come to your network, you can see I've got, um, I've got 12 people who are waiting to connect with me, right? I check this a few times a day. He's asking, and I'm sure others of you are wondering, should I be selective about who I connect with? Uh, I'm not. I accept everybody. And I'll tell you why I do that. First of all, I've made mistakes where I judge books by their cover only to find out that it was a really good lead, okay? So sometimes because people don't know how to use LinkedIn or they're just getting started with it, um, it you might jump, I've jumped to the wrong conclusion. And so I accept everyone. Uh, the other reason I accept everyone is, uh, you know, I'm relatively close to the 30,000 connection point. When you hit 30,000, um, then what happens is on all of your posts, as you're posting on, on LinkedIn, automatically a follow button is added and you have now the ability um, to get followers right from the newsfeed as opposed to them having to click into your profile. Big advantage to grow your, your, grow your network. I'd venture to guess that most of you are not in the 20,000 range, but um, that's the other reason why I do it. So I love talking to people. Um, you will get a lot of pitches. One of the things that, that I use to help that, let me just show you real quick. If you go to messaging, I use the um, away message feature. Let me see if I can see one here. Um, anywho, I don't, I don't see a good example here, but the away message, maybe I can open it up here. Yeah, see, this is what bounces back when somebody messages me. So you will get pitches, okay? Um, what I do is I send them back this auto reply that says, hey, if you're serious, right, text me at this number, same number I gave all of you, okay? And so what we're able to do is siphon the legitimate interest from LinkedIn because you never want to miss a lead. You never want to miss an opportunity over into SMS, right? So that's what, that's what I do to uh, cut down uh, for our team the number of uh, 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 messages that may not be relevant. Do you want to save your changes? So discard. Yeah, I hope I did the right thing there. Um, the other thing is that for those of you who offer marketing services, anybody who pitches you something is trying to sell or market themselves or their company. One thing that I would suggest you consider is uh, having a, like a pre-written response. That's what we call a reverse pitch. Gently, helpfully reply back to them with something like, hey, does this kind of engagement work for you? And usually they'll reply and say, no, I'm really frustrated. Hardly anyone replies to me. Or they'll say something like, yeah, it works great, but what do you have in mind? And it gives you, for those of you who are marketing services providers who, who can help companies with lead gen and sales, gives you an opportunity to say, well, um, have you considered using direct mail? Have you considered an ABM strategy? Maybe I can help you and your company actually engage your potential clients. So I don't know if that's helpful for some of you. Um, consider the reverse pitch. David saying, how do you present multiple areas of business interest through consulting, et cetera? Um, so there's a lot of areas where you can do that here in accomplishments. You can add that, um, David, you can, uh, highlight that here in your media section here in the featured section, David, that's another place that you can do it. Let's see. Mike is asking defining clear strategies for roles of employee LinkedIn versus company LinkedIn pages. Jessica, I'm not sure. What's the question that Mike is asking. Can you just clarify the question? Um, Alana is saying how to integrate an event into LinkedIn event pages instead of simply posting. So um, that's an option that all of you have, Alana. You can go over here on the left-hand side, see where it says events. I don't know if Alana, if you're still here. Uh, you might be in uh, LinkedIn. But if you go over here, folks, you can create an event. All of you should have the ability to click this little plus button and create an event. Annie is saying how do we actually get prospects to find us for direct mail projects? Annie. 
that's one of the things that we cover here. I'm going to bring this back up on the screen. Is Annie still here? If Annie is still here, or for those of you who are wondering how this works, when you do all of these things together, you get your profile right, you start publishing content, you start connecting, and you start engaging. You do those four things, people start to come to you, Annie. That's how it works. I'm giving it to you at a very high level, but this is the process, okay? Max, what should I do on my personal profile versus the company profile? Max, one big opportunity that you have on your personal profile is, um, you know, you can be authentic as a human, human to human. And often what you can find um, are topics or posts that work really well for you as an individual that you can then repurpose or leverage from your company page. So if you have someone running your company page and you notice a particular post on your own personal page is doing well, ask them to repurpose that for your company page, as long as it has some sort of call to action in it. When it works well there on your company page, the subsequent opportunity you have is now you can put um, a, an ad budget behind it, meaning you can boost that to more of your customers, to more of your potential customers. So we go more into that in the training, Max. I don't know if you're signed up for that yet. Let me bring that back up on the screen. Anybody who wants to have an opportunity to go through that trainer, talk more, mindfiremarketing.com forward slash yes. I think, Max, you're in the training next week, so we will cover that more. Phil says, do prospects look at LinkedIn before deciding to work with you? Absolutely. If you're asking about MindFire, asking about the proverbial you, absolutely. George is saying, strategies to grow the four specific areas in the SSI scoring. George, um, so that would probably be something that uh, we could cover more deeply in that six-week training, although I know you've been through it. Uh, but it's, it's consistent use of these four areas properly that leads to an increase in SSI, which is that score that you see up there. So let me know which one you think you're weakest in. Um, Fred is saying, correct looking and hiding sensitive info and functional. What's that mean, Fred or Jess? Do you know? Um, Jennifer says, I have several roles. Not sure which to make my title. Let me see, Jennifer. Hope it's okay to bring yours up on the screen if you're still here. And I'm going to uh, see if we have any more real-time. Uh, Jess, are you getting these from the upfront submissions or are you getting these from real-time um, questions? Let me know there in the chat. I want to make sure I'm getting the real-time questions. All right, so Jennifer, um, you're asking about your title here. Jennifer, are you still here? If you're here, let me know in the chat. And uh, Jess, let's put focus on the questions that are coming up in real time here. Uh, so I see Tom, Taylor, Steve, Sharon, Lauren, Kim, Jeff, James, Gwen, Erwin still here, Chris, Betsy, and Anthony. Uh, and then folks over there in LinkedIn, I want to answer your real time questions. Let me know, go over to the chat if you're still here. I want to know what questions you have um, from everything uh, that we've just talked about. If there's anything else I can do to help, I know that we said as officially we would schedule this to uh, 1045, but I want to make sure to um, honor any additional questions you have. I hope this has been helpful to you. Has it been useful? If you're still here and you're paying attention, drop a yes in the chat if this has been useful to you. I'm going to throw up the URL there on the screen, mindfiremarketing.com forward slash yes. Do you have anything you want to talk one-on-one -on -one about? Sharon says yes, it's been thankful. Sharon, do you have any other questions? Over there on LinkedIn, if you have any other questions, please let me know. Erwin says, super helpful and useful. Erwin, if there's folks on your sales team that you think should go through this kind of training, um, let us know, mindfiremarketing.com forward slash yes. I, I, we'd um, love to help you and, and your sales team with that. Jeff, has this been helpful? What specifically was useful to you? Sharon says, I finally did my company page and I posted once. Okay, Sharon, that's all right. One step at a time. Um, Sharon is asking, is my profile giving off the right message? I guess, Sharon, you asked this up front. You want me to pull up your profile, Sharon? If you want me to, I'm happy to do that. What other questions do you have? Okay, Sharon is saying, yikes, okay. <laughs> yeah, let's take a look here, Sharon. Don't worry. We all have to start somewhere. Sharon, I think this is your last name. Let me make sure I got that right. Please confirm. Okay, so Sharon's got a cool uh, background image, not using the default one, okay. Um, passionate about print and packaging, 
working with brands producing packaging that sells. Okay, so not, not too far off. Not too far off. Let's see. Uh, if you're looking for a packaging supplier, this is exactly where I can help you. Okay. Interesting. Let's see what else you have down here. So you're known for packaging, product development, marketing strategy recommendations are a li little on the older side. You've got your accomplishments. Okay, so what I would what I would call out to you to consider, uh, I suppose this image here has to do with designing packaging. Is that right, Sharon? I suppose that's what that that's uh, related to. I get that. Um, yeah. I don't think I, I, if, if you're getting the results that you're looking for, I, I would say maybe um, leave your headline. But if you're not, I would consider maybe reframing your headline. And again, in the guide, uh, there's a template that you might want to use. I would have to go through here in more detail, but it's, you've got your phone number. You've got your, um, you've got your email address. Let me see how active you are. So there's a little insider information here. You can always go and see what people are doing. So I can see a month ago you posted. Okay. A month ago, two months ago. Okay, so Sharon, the first thing that I would say is you have to post a lot more frequently. Let me see, how often are you commenting? Um, you liked that two days ago. You commented on this. Um, when did you comment on that? Two days ago. Okay. So something like this, Sharon, uh, awesome speed, and I haven't read the post here, but you know that, that's a good opportunity to get your headline out in front of somebody. Uh, so you like this. So yeah, I would say Sharon, that for you, if you're not getting what you're looking for yet, um, then I would say that it's probably the other four things that you need to start, um, being more intentional about. Also, given that packaging is, is tactile and visual, I would consider turning on the, the, the featured media section and showing some example, showing some cool, uh, case studies or examples or videos of things that you can do. Uh, and then also getting uh, some more up-to-date recommendations. Uh, this one's not too old, right? Um, two years old, I guess, at this point. This one's six years, so maybe a little bit more recent. Um, Jeff says, I have a lot of work to do. I haven't considered LinkedIn to be valuable, but this confirms that there is a strategic way to utilize the platform for marketing. I'd like to re review my five-year objectives with you offline. All right, so Jeff, did you, um, did you uh, fill in a uh, form there so we can get a time on the calendar? We'd love to do that with you. Sharon, you're welcome. I hope that was helpful to you. And again, I'm going, I'm going through quickly. Uh, so Jeff, if you haven't, um, go to that mindfiremarketing.com forward slash yes. So we make sure we get some time with you. Uh, Lauren's having issues linking to her company. So maybe Jess, you can help Lauren offline. Um, just look at what she's got on her screen. See if we can um, figure that out for Lauren. Let me see if, um, let me see if Leon's got it done correctly. Uh, Leon Cap. Lynn, here we go. Uh, what happened to your, uh, what happened to Leon's uh, photo there? Uh, Lauren, didn't he have it at one point? So he definitely needs to work on that. Um, so yeah, your uh, Leon's got it here. So if you can look at how he's done it, um, Jess or uh, Lauren, you should be able to fix that up. I'm not sure why you're not finding it. Are you doing it on the phone or on desktop? Switch to the, um, I would suggest switch to desktop if you're trying it on your phone. Um, let's see, Betsy asks how, how, how to make people want to click on it. Betsy, click on what? Remind me what we were talking about. Remind me, uh, how to make people want to click on what? That would be helpful. So I still see Tom's here, Steve, Sharon, uh, Jeff, James, Gwen, Erwin's still here, Chris, Betsy, Anthony. Uh, we have gone past our time, um, but I want to make sure I answer any other questions for you. Betsy's saying, how to make people want to click your web page in LinkedIn. So your web page where, Betsy? Do you mean the, the link here inside your contact info or somewhere else? Uh, where, where are you referring to? Your company page. So on your company page, how to make them want to click your web page. Um, that's usually down here. Uh, again, it would be if someone uh, is writing this overview here in a way that's engaging your target audience and piquing their interest in what you can do for, for them, uh, folks will click that link. They definitely will. 
um, or they will call a phone number if you've listed a phone number here. Laura, no problem. All right, I'm going to wait another few minutes. Uh, Jessica, anything else that we missed? Uh, Bill had asked, I don't know if Bill is still here, uh, can I simply grab recommendations we have on our website and put them in here myself? I think he's asking about the recs um, that show up here in LinkedIn. No, you can't. You have to ask another LinkedIn member and then they submit it back to you. So you can't uh, game the system in that way. I'm not suggesting that you were saying that, but no, um, it has to be done by the user. However, in the media section, you could certainly, and he doesn't have his on, but you could certainly uh, put your, your testimonials there. Absolutely. Okay, Jess, what other questions do people have? Betsy, Chris, I'm going to call you out one more time. Erwin, Gwen, James, Jeff, Lauren, Steve, Tom. Betsy says she's got to go. No problem. We are past our time anyways, but I want to make sure that you all get what you need from us. Um, if you're all good, awesome. If you want to talk further, please let's grab a time here. Go to mindfiremarketing.com uh, forward slash yes. Just throw that back in the chat one more time. I'll put that back up on the screen uh, here momentarily. And you should see it. So there it is on the screen. And then Jess will throw it back in. Bye, Lauren. It's great seeing you. So mindfiremarketing.com forward slash yes. Thank you, um, Jess, for putting that in. And uh, folks, I'll stay here for another minute or two. I'm going to keep an eye on the questions. If, you have, if you're done, if you got what you needed today, uh, let me know in the chat and then say goodbye um, over there in LinkedIn or in Zoom. And we'll call it to an end. Was this helpful for you? Was this helpful for everyone that's left? I've had a lot of fun. Hopefully you have as well. I know that there's a lot of distractions going on right now in the world. A couple of things going on, right? But thank you for being here with me today. Uh, anybody else? Tom? Tom, you still here? Jeff, Steve, James, Gwen, anything else? Jessica, anything else? Anything you want me to make people aware of, Jess? Or anything you want to say? Now's your, now's your chance, Jessica. <laughs> Jeff says, still here, I'll be in touch. Awesome, Jeff. Tom, you're welcome, man. Thank you also for engaging me on Facebook. Appreciate that and hope that the uh, discussion is, is civil enough and, and friendly enough there. Awesome, Tom. Uh, over on LinkedIn, anybody else? If not, we'll draw to a close. Thank you again. Uh, next week, uh, we will have a different session uh, queued up for you. We'll let all of you know. Erwin, no problem. Um, and uh, stay tuned for more on that. Reach out to me in all the channels that we mentioned. And again, thank you for your time. Stay calm. Take some deep breaths. I know that a lot of you have probably been tuned into the election just like the rest of us. Um, we will move forward, and I'm sure everything is going to uh, come together at some point here. Hopefully you all stay calm and that there's not too much tension there in the office or wherever you happen to be working today. Jeff says, thank you all. You have a great team. Thank you, Jeff. That's really kind of you to say. We do have a wonderful team. It's, uh, it's my honor to be the dancing monkey that everyone gets to see, but really it's the power of the team that we have here at MindFire that makes all the difference. So with that, I wish you all a great rest of the day. Have a good one no matter where in the world you happen to be, and we'll see you all soon. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.